Hi everybody and welcome to AFR's series on safe gun handling. We're excited to bring this series to you. Our mission here at Ankeny Firearms Research is to elevate the shooting sports, to teach you the right way, the safe way to handle firearms, whether you hunt, carry for protection, or simply want to spend time at the range on a hot summer's day. Today, we're going to talk about the types of pistols that you're likely to encounter during your first steps as a marksman. But before we do, let's review the NRA's rules of safe gun handling. First, always keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction. Second, always keep your finger off the trigger until you are ready to shoot. Third, always keep the gun unloaded until ready to use. The basic rule that we subscribe to here at AFR is that all guns are always loaded all the time and you never point at anything that you don't intend to shoot. Okay, let's get started. Let's begin with a little nomenclature. Every gun is comprised of three major components. The frame, which is the basic structure for the firearm, the barrel, which is the tube down which the bullet travels when it's fired, and the action, which includes all the moving parts associated with the bullet firing process. Let's take a second to talk about the barrel. The business end of the barrel is called the muzzle. I want to point this out because you always need to remember that whether you are shooting, demonstrating, or even cleaning a disassembled firearm, the muzzle should never be pointed at anyone or anything you don't intend to shoot. Make muzzle awareness a habit, and remember, you play like you practice. Up until the 1830s, and in practice up until the end of the Civil War, most pistols were single shot affairs and pretty cumbersome by today's standards. To load this 54 caliber percussion lock, for example, you have to place powder in a powder measure so that you get the correct amount, pour the powder down the barrel, take a greased patch and your lead ball, which was your bullet, place those in the muzzle, and then you'd use a ball starter to start everything down the barrel. You'd push it as far down as you could with the ball starter. Then to finish, you would take your ramrod and push everything down tight. And for all that, it still wasn't ready to fire because what you then had to do was open your lock part way and place a percussion cap in the lock so you'd have a source of ignition. Now the gun was ready to fire. Here's the thing. If you got into a position where you thought that you were going to have to take multiple shots, you didn't really have a lot of choice. You ended up carrying multiple pistols. And it really wasn't uncommon back in the 1830s to see someone with anywhere between two and four pistols across their belt. That all changes in 1836 when Samuel Colt patents the first practical revolver. Over the years, the Colt went through many changes. It was often said that God made man, but Sam Colt made them equal. However, the early Colt still required hand loading. The widespread use of brass cartridges was still a couple of decades away. Finally, in 1857, Horace Smith and Daniel Wesson began to develop a gun that fired brass cartridges like the ones that we use today, and the modern single-action pistol was born. Let's take a look at the single-action revolver, the so-called six-shooter of cowboy fame. And before we get started with this demonstration, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check to make sure that this gun is truly empty. Anytime you pick up a gun, you want to do this too. Even if somebody before you was handling the gun and checked it, you always want to check for yourself, and in this case we're good to go. So, why do we call it single action? Well, the answer is, in order to fire it, we bring the hammer all the way back to the full cock position, and then squeeze the trigger. To fire the next round, we're going to bring the hammer back again, that rotates the cylinder, puts a fresh cartridge in firing position, and pull the trigger. And Every time we fire it, we go through the same process. Now if I just squeeze the trigger, nothing happens. You have to manually cock it. 
before he's shot. We call it single action. So, how would we load it? Well, on this gun, you're going to bring the hammer back to half cock. We open the access door to the cylinder, and we're going to insert five rounds of ammunition. And in this case, we're using dummy rounds. See your distinctive color, because we never use live rounds, either in the studio or in the classroom. Now you're going to say, Ted, that's a six shooter. You only put five rounds in. Why is that? Well. In some older guns, if you load six rounds, then you're going to have a live cartridge right underneath the hammer. And if you happen to drop the gun and the hammer spur hits the ground, it can, have enough, it can put enough force on the mechanism to cause the cartridge to discharge, which we don't want to have happen. So just to be safe, we only load five rounds. Now, in modern single actions, there's usually a transfer bar in place that keeps that from happening. But anytime you have a mechanical device on any gun, safety, transfer bar, whatever, it can fail. So to be on the safe side, we here at AFR only load five rounds, leaving that one position empty. So to unload, we're going to come back to the half cock position. And then what's going to happen is, is there's an extractor rod that you're going to push in order to bring the spent case out of the cylinder. And that's the single action revolver. Let's talk some about the double action revolver. At first glance, it looks very much like the single action, but as we check to make sure that it's empty, you'll see one of the big differences right off the bat. We have here a cylinder release. Instead of having a door, instead of going to half cock, we simply push on the release and then move the whole cylinder out where we can look in it. And you can see there a couple of things. The first thing is that it's empty, and the second, and there holds more than six shots. That's not uncommon for a 22 caliber revolver. So, why these differences? Well, it has to do with the way that the gun fires. And with a double action, we can cock and fire, as we did with a single action, or we can simply pull the trigger. And every time we pull the trigger, the cylinder revolves, puts a new cartridge in position, and so we can fire very rapidly. Okay? So how would we load this piece? Well, we're going to open the cylinder, and then we're going to insert, it's a nine shot revolver, so we're going to insert one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and just out of habit, I'm going to leave the chamber under the hammer clear. Now, in modern revolvers, that is really even less necessary than it is in single actions. It's just an old habit with me that dies hard. I think it's a little safer. So to fire now, I can cock and fire, or simply pull the trigger. When I'm done shooting, I open up the cylinder, and now extraction is a little bit faster. Here's my extractor rod. I push it one time, and I'm empty. So this gun is very much more efficient than the old single action. And there you have the double action revolver. The last type of action we're going to talk about today is the semi-automatic pistol. And this is the pistol that you're going to most likely run into in concealed carry situations. Now, one of the things that you'll notice going in is that there is no cylinder for, to load the cartridges in. Instead, rounds are contained in a magazine 
or what we commonly call a clip, that slides up inside the grip into the frame. Now, we just pulled this clip out and you can see that there are no rounds in here. But that doesn't mean that there's not still a live round in the chamber. So what we always have to do with the semi-automatic is pull back on the slide and then look down into the chamber to see if there's a live round in there. And in this case, we're good to go. So how does the semi-auto work? Well, let's go through a firing sequence. I think that's the best way to explain it. Let's go ahead and load a couple of rounds into the clip. And bear in mind, it's not uncommon for any of these semi-auto clips to hold at least 10 rounds, sometimes much more. It's one of the advantages of a semi-auto is they can be very high capacity. So with the rounds in the clip, we insert that into the frame. And now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cycle it once. And you can see where the round is coming up there to put a live round in the chamber. All right? Now, when this gun is fired, when you pull the trigger, what's going to happen is you're going to strike the primer. The primer is going to ignite the powder. The powder burns and makes a lot of very hot gas that expands very rapidly. That's what propels the bullet out of the barrel. What we do in the semi-automatic is we harness some of that gas to drive the slide back. And when that happens, it ejects the spent round, and you can see that there's a fresh round ready to go into position. And we fire it again. We eject that round, and another one will load. This gun will fire rounds as quickly as you can pull the trigger. Okay? So, having seen how it works, let me point out a couple of things about this particular pistol. This is what's called a double action pistol, which means when you go to fire it, you can either pull back on the hammer and cock it, just as you would a revolver, or you can simply pull the trigger. Okay? So this is actually a double action semi-automatic. Okay, so enough with the lecture. Let's go out to the range and have some fun. So let's review. What have we done today? We've taken a look at single action revolvers, double action revolvers, and semi-automatic pistols. We've learned how to load them, unload them, and a little bit about how they shoot. Until next time, this is Ted Dyer saying, safe shooting.